I've been in the Apple ecosystem for about 12 years. Started with an iPad, followed with a MacBook, and then the iPhone. But recently, I picked up the Xiaomi Redmi Pad SE 8.7 inch, a budget Android tablet, not to replace the iPad, but to use it in different ways. The plan was to use it as a smart home dashboard, a bedside ebook reader, and after many years, just to experience what Android is like these days. And honestly, I was surprised, in a good way. Here's how it went and how it stacks up against my trusty iPad Pro 11 inch from 2018. Hi, welcome to Made by Jade. I'm slowly building my smart home and I wanted a small dedicated screen for home assistant, something I could mount on the wall or keep in the central space in my home. You know, to control devices and check status instead of always checking my phone. Initially, I got the cheapest touch screen I could find and my idea was to use it with a Raspberry Pi, maybe add some speakers and somehow build a control hub that could play notifications and music. But seeing how bulky this screen was, I kind of abandoned that idea, but not completely because, of course, a tablet would be great for that. And since I'm deep into Apple's ecosystem, at first thought an iPad would be great, but even the cheapest models are still too expensive for this kind of casual use. So I started looking into Android tablets and ended up with the Xiaomi Redmi Pad SE 8.7 inch. It was affordable, had decent reviews and seemed perfect for light tasks. And I figured, why not? I've also started reading more and for the most part, I've been using my iPad for that. But it's kind of big and heavy and a dedicated ebook reader would be cool, but I can't justify the price for just this use. But that small Android tablet? I got it for 95 euros. Unboxing it, the tablet felt pretty lightweight and comfortable to hold. The build is plastic, but honestly, it's fine. I would get a case for it anyway. But the biggest surprise, HyperOS. I didn't know what to expect, but it kind of looks and feels a lot like iOS. The app icons, the layout, the swipe gestures, it was super familiar right out of the box. It didn't feel like switching to a completely different operating system. It felt more like trying a different flavor of iOS. I installed Home Assistant and it works really well as a control panel for the devices that I have. Performance-wise, it's not lightning fast. Sometimes it takes quite a minute to complete a task, but it's good enough for this purpose. It connects reliably to the Wi-Fi, responds to taps and loads the dashboard with minimal lag. For something meant to live on a wall or dock most of the time, no complaints at all. Next up, reading, and this has honestly become my favorite use for this tablet. I installed Readera. Of all the apps that I tested, this was the best in terms of graphics, especially for super detailed manga. If you have any suggestions of good apps for reading and annotating PDFs, EPUBs, CBZ, let me know in the comments. It's light, comfortable to hold, and the screen brightness can go super low. Perfect for nighttime reading. I also enabled the blue light filter. Here it's called reading mode so it's easier on the eyes before bed. I've also printed this is bed thing and let me tell you, this is awesome. I've been reading a lot more because of it. Instead of having to sit in the bed and hold the tablet, I can lay down and give my back a bit of a rest and continue reading with the tablet in a good angle without having to hold it. Love it. And if that wasn't enough, I've also mapped the controls on this tiny controller. I don't even have to reach the tablet to change the page. There will be awesome during winter. I haven't pushed this tablet with heavy gaming or hours of multitasking because really I don't usually do that, especially in a small screen. But for the light stuff that I'm using it for, dashboards, ebooks, a bit of browsing, watching YouTube and even watching anime, it's been super efficient. The battery life has actually been great. I can go several days without charging it, especially since I only use it for one hour or two a day with zero notifications. Overall, performance has been solid. Not fast, but 
not frustrating either, just enough to keep things smooth for what I need. One thing I do miss compared to the iPad is stylus support. This tablet doesn't support an active pen, so you can't really use it for proper drawing or note taking. That's a bit of a shame because sometimes I like the option just to sketch something really quick or annotate documents, and even try Android apps for digital drawing. I could pick up one of those cheap capacitive pens that basically just acts like a finger, but let's be real, the experience probably wouldn't be great. It might work for tapping around or doodling, but it wouldn't come close to the Apple Pencil on the iPad or any other combo of tablet and dedicated stylus. So if drawing or serious note taking is important to you, this isn't the tablet for that. But for me, since I'm mainly using it for dashboard, reading, it's not a deal breaker. I will continue to use the iPad for drawing and annotating and postpone the Android drawing experience for later. Another drawback is storage and file transfer. The Xiaomi Pad SE doesn't offer proper support for connecting external SSDs or HDDs. You can plug a pen drive or use a micro SD, which is nice, but it's not as convenient as just hooking up an SSD with all your files and drag things over. For small stuff, I I've been relying on Google Drive to transfer files between my Mac and the tablet, but for bigger files I've used a micro SD card once or twice. It works, but honestly it's not very convenient. It's fine if you don't have to move files around much, but if you're used to the flexibility of plugging a drive like you can do on iPad Pro or laptop, it feels pretty limiting. Overall it's not perfect. It's still a budget tablet, app loading can be a bit slow, animations are not as fluid, and sometimes the touch response feels a bit delayed. But nothing has crashed or glitched in a way that broke the experience. It's just budgeted performance, and I'm okay with that. Coming from Apple, I was expecting Android to feel totally foreign, but with HyperOS the transition was almost seamless. Still, here I don't have the tight ecosystem feel of Apple, no airdrop or handoff, and it's a bit of a pain to share files from my Mac to it. If you have any suggestions of a more efficient way to share files between a Mac and Android, please let me know. And consider subscribing. This is a new channel, at the moment I don't have much to offer you, but I'm working on some very cool projects and they will appear on your YouTube feed. If you're an Apple user wondering if a Jet Android tablet could be useful, yeah, it honestly can. The Xiaomi Pad SE has been a pleasant surprise. It's not powerful, but it's reliable and flexible, and does exactly what I need without costing a fortune. I'm not switching, but I'm keeping this tablet, and kind of enjoying a bit of both worlds. If you ever tried mixing Android into your Apple Life or the other way around, let me know how it went. And if you're also building your smart home, you might like to check this video where I share my most used automations that, re that require very little hardware, but make my life a lot easier. Until next time, bye!